What's going on today everybody? Well, we had an interesting ride home earlier in the week where it's actually getting warm enough to actually try to use the AC outside. We went to use the AC on my wife's car and it's not blowing out in the vents for your face. Weirdest thing. So, doing some research on it, it sounds like we've got an HVAC system where one of the blower blendor type deals isn't working. Now I'm gonna go through and show you how to do this and this is kind of the same for all four of them. There's four motors in this vehicle and they're all four the same. They all have the same part number, part numbers listed below and it's the same general idea on how to get to them. They're just in four different areas and I'll try to show you those areas as best I can. But the one we're getting at today is actually the easiest. The selectors to select from your defroster, your face vents, your, or your feet vents, or any of the other in between. So, without further ado, I'll show you what I'm talking about and hopefully you'll, you'll be able to see. So, let's get to it. Okay, here we are. We're in the car. We'll put the keys in and we'll turn it past accessory to the on position so that the radio comes on and now you can see that we've got climate controls. And if I go ahead and switch, you can see it switch between each of the modes. But there's no motor sound coming from down in the passenger footwell. And another thing I was messing with these is I was trying to do the recirculation and it won't let me do the research. So on the passenger side, below your glove box, there's a little door right here. You can see this cutout. There's the door, kick panel, floorboard. There's this little cutout right here. And if you reach your hand up, there's a little knob that will pull this whole little panel down and the carpet kind of gets in the way but there's another fuse box up in there this is where your interior fuse box is and it's got all your fuses and the one we're interested in is H right there H back 10 amp maybe this vent one since we're trying to figure out the vents so we'll try pulling those first See if we can reset them, but I'm thinking it's the actuator. So there we go. Laying on the ground, we got this pulled out, and it actually seems pretty okay. So we'll put it back in and try the other one that we think is the problem. Second fuse pulled out. Seems to be fine. So now that we've gone ahead and checked the easy stuff, the fuses, to make sure that they aren't blown, that that's causing the problem, I'm going to double check it again make sure that that didn't reset it or do something funny um, and then see if I can find the one under the hood to actually pull out and look at. That'll be the easy ones and then we'll go ahead and get to removing stuff and then getting to where the actuators actually are because if we can do it with just replacing the fuse and not pulling out the glove box and pulling out the actuators and test resistance and all that stuff it's best to just try it so we're trying it real quick and uh seeing if that will fix it probably not but it's good insurance to say hey it, i checked it and it's done so go ahead try it see if it's fixed itself probably hasn't but we'll try that and then we'll switch to the under the hood and then if that doesn't work then we'll switch to actually replacing the actuator keys turned on it's on the face all the way up and there's nothing coming out of these vents. They're on, both of these are. And you can hear it coming out of the floorboard down here. And I can feel it. So it's still stuck on the feet even though it says it's on the face. So we'll go ahead and try something else out. So now we're underneath the car, came over to this side, popped this cover off, and we're looking for anything that looks, looks like HVAC or uh, VAC system, VAC pump, and there's one right here, VAC pump, um, RR HVAC, I don't know what that one does, and then auxiliary VAC pump. Pulled all three of those, oh, there's a VAC blower one too. Pulled all four of those, 
put them back in and made sure that that wasn't the problem and uh, tried it, definitely not the problem. So now we're on to actually move in underneath the glove box and getting into these actuators. Now that we've got the glove box down, there's two screws to untwist. There's one right there, one right there, and then there's a pin to remove right here. This one's the easiest. It just pulls up from the outside. And then you can pull it through. Just pull them back on this, and then you can pull it back through. Now that one's out, we can go ahead and take these and twist them. And they'll come out. Be careful because your glove box will want to come down. And they'll come out. Set them. Cup holder's a good place. Do the other one. Now the whole glove box should come down. So the glove box is attached back here by multiple five clips that are set on a round bar and you just take it and you pry up when it's when the glove box is down you want to pry up on it and that will get you loose one thing that i learned while doing this is take all the stuff out because it falls out on the floor and then you wind up moving in anyway so save yourself from headache take it out in the first place but here's the bar that those sit on and all it is is just some little clips that just clip on that you just have to pull it out here we are glove box out and there's one of the actuators and i believe that that's the one that's gone out on me now if we look a little bit around the corner you can start to see another one right there so there's two actuators right there but I believe that this easy one to get to is going to be ours, which is highly hopeful. But um, it's got three Torx bit heads. You can see there's a Torx bit head right there. There's one up there. And then there's one down in the middle of the screen that you can't quite see. And then one pin con uh, collector. So we'll go ahead and take the pin off and we'll get our T20 Torx bit and get ready to take this piece out. So it's a pressure clip you just push on this side. There's a little black Tab that you just push on and pull back pinch together on the red and then the black on that side and then the wiring should just come out Now you can see the clip Just give it a little push gets that clip off of there Now we'll push that out of the way and now we're on to doing our Torx bits so here's a little trick. I've got my Torx bit and that area to get into is really, really tight. I don't have much room. I can barely get my hand in here to get that out. So going ahead and I've got my extension here. Now this extension is magnetic. So I'll go ahead and put my T20 Torx bit in. It's magnetic, it holds it in there. And then I'll get a quarter inch drive ratcheting wrench and I'll go ahead and put it on here well now I can use it as a wrench but if I go to move upside down it falls out so we'll take ourselves a piece of cloth here put it around the end and put our ratchet down on over this now it's a little bit snugger of a fit but look at that I can hold it upside down any way I want. I can ratchet it. it. Still works. It's just held in there. And it works with tape or napkins. Anything's real easy to get to, but I just had some blue paper towels on hand. So we'll go ahead and we'll use that and we'll go make sure one thing, make sure that it's on the right way cuz oh, I did. I got it on the right way. So that's loosen and we'll have to flip the wrench around to get it on tighten. But there's a quick little way so now I can get up in here and not have to worry about losing my bit or losing my wrench or losing my extension. Go ahead and remove all those. 
So while we've got all this all taken apart, if you go ahead and push up on all four of these clips, one, two, three, four, you can pull this out. And this is a fantastic time to do your in-cabin air filter. Might as well pick one up because that one's getting gross. Well, after destroying my hand trying to get the first one out, I've already scratched my hand and all the crap, I found this clip. Now this clip was sitting right next to, if you remember, the fuse door holding this panel on. Right there, you can see the hole. So you go from underneath and you can pull that pin out and then we go over towards the driver's side. And there's another one. And you can just wiggle it right out. Pulls right out. Now, this whole piece has come loose. And it actually comes out. If we set that aside, now we've got a whole bunch of room to work with and get our hands up in here. And not try to force our hand through here and kill ourselves. So, start out by taking that piece off because that helped out a lot. Well, that was thoroughly harder than I was expecting and that was the easy one to get out. But, there it is. This is the OEM one, and this is the Amazon basic one. You can tell they're pretty close. Here's the part numbers on the brand, or the OEM one. Here's the other side. But you can see the three mounting holes and it sits in there like this. This one was the actually the easiest once I took that bottom part off. This one was the pain to get off. So now I'm curious as to why this one's not working. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this open because I read online that there's a plastic gear that fails on this. And that's what's wrong. That's what's causing it to not work because it's not, it's slipping on this piece. And if everything's okay in here, I can switch the gear out from here to here. Now that's one option. The other option is we can go ahead and put this piece in, replace this one, and just get rid of this one altogether. From what I've heard, is that these ones don't last nearly as long as these as these ones do. And the only part that fails on them is this ring right here. And I'll open it up and I'll show you what I'm talking about from re just from reading online. Not saying that that's what this one is, but hopefully it's what it is. Well, fortunately, but unfortunately, the gear doesn't seem to be causing the problem. The gear actually seems fine, but when I open it up, this is the OEM one, this is the new one. When I opened this one up, it smelled bad of a burnt motor. So, I'm gonna venture to say that this motor's toast. So, we'll go ahead and we'll do some bench tests and I'll put a nine volt up to it and see if it will actually turn. And if not, I'm betting that's our problem. Well, I don't even have to do that. Uh, just as soon as I said that, I pulled the motor to go pull it out. And if you look at that resistor right there, that little resistor looks like it's having some troubles. That thing is burnt up all the way around that. That is interesting. It's supposed to look exactly like that one. And that one. And look at it, look at the color. Yeah, that resistor was bad. Well, there you can definitely see that there's a difference with that resistor than the other two. So that one's definitely burnt up. Come on, Herb. You and I both know you're better than this. Come on, that's shoddy work right there. So I'm getting ready to go ahead and put this, uh, the new, actually this is the OEM one, the new actuator in, let's throw that one away. 
the new actuator in and I was thinking about it and it's probably pretty, a pretty big deal on where the actuator is at. Now this one's stuck on the center. If you look on it, it's got a line on it and a cut in the little silver bit right here that that's centered. And now that's fine. I can center the actuator up on the um, bolt holes. So I can center this pin on the bolt holes because this won't this won't turn without the motor turning. And the motor tur is a worm gear, so it won't turn very easily. So I can just use that to rotate it. But where on the selector is that? Is that the defrosters? Is that your feet only? Is that your face and the feet? There's, what is there, five modes or six modes where it could be. So I'm gonna go ahead and do some digging and try to figure out where it is that it's supposed to be at where this thing's centered up. So the computer, when I go to select feet, it's a certain position on there. It doesn't go past it and go feet and door or feet and window or doesn't do what I don't want it to do. So we're gonna go ahead and figure out where that actually is. And I'm gonna go ahead, turn the car to the on and turn the actuator or turn the door, the part that this actually holds onto, turn that by hand and feel which vent it's coming out of. And that way I can figure out where the center of it is, what the dial needs to be set at in the computer to figure out, okay, so it's the foot and the window. That's where the dial needs to be set at when this is set to where this is. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, leave a comment. I'll hopefully I'll explain it a little bit better. Maybe I can make another video on it, but hopefully it makes sense. I'm trying to line up with where this is preset because this will, won't turn anymore. Where this is preset, I'm trying to line this piece up with where the computer thinks it is. Hopefully that makes it easier. Okay, I've got a dummy set up in there. It's on all the bolt holes. It doesn't go on any further. It doesn't twist, it doesn't turn. So now I'm gonna go ahead and turn the car on. And then turn the air on, full blast and try to figure out with my hands. So it's definitely coming out of the feet, but I don't feel it coming out of here or here. So it's looking like this needs to be just on the feet position. Now that might change. It might have something where it calibrates itself, but I wanna make sure that that's right where that needs to be. Maybe I'll turn past. No, passenger won't help us. That won't help us either. So it looks like it's blowing out of the top up here. And definitely down here at the bottom. So I think those are my two spots. Well, I just turned the car on and it's doing a self-calibration, it looks like. It went all the way to one side, all the way to the other side. Now I'm going to turn the fan or the power back on and maybe it will go through it again. Looks like it's just open and closed. So now that should be face only. Then we'll go, we'll click one up. Now that should be feet and defrost. It's on the feet and it's on the defrost. Now that should be feet only. And that one is face and feet. There's face only. So at face only, face, we'll go ahead and turn it up. 
and we have nothing coming out of here. We've got a whole bunch coming out of there and nothing coming out of up top. That is pretty slick. Now if we change it to feet in defrost, it changed. Now it's pushing air up here. And it's pushing air down here. And not right here. Heck yeah, I'm glad that that worked out. So I've got a little bit more buttoning up to do, but all I'm gonna do is just the reverse of what you saw me do take apart. So I'm gonna go ahead and put um, this last bolt in because I was cheap and wanted to make sure that it worked before I put the last bolt in that's annoying to get to. So put the last bolt in, put the glove box in, go get a new air filter because the in-cabin air filter is gross. Um, yeah. Cool. Well, if you sticked around this far, here's the HVAC blend door actuator. And this is the part number you want to look up. 604140. I'll leave a link to this one that I got uh, down below. It's, it's an Amazon um, one, but definitely it seems to work off the get-go. Now longevity, people say they have problems with the non-OEM ones. We will see. But it's better than uh, the OEM one that's not working. I tried to get it to work and I, it's that resistor is just gone. Not going to work. So, without further ado, I'm going to get out of here. Get this car back together and enjoy the rest of the sunshiny day. You guys enjoy the rest of your day, your week. Whenever I see you next, I'm going to get out of here. Take it easy, everyone. Peace! And if you happen to find this helpful, if you happen to have any comments you want to leave, leave a comment. If you like the video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you're new, please subscribe. It helps me out a ton. I'm trying to, trying to grow my channel and stay motivated and try to help other people out. I'm, I'm just trying to help everyone out. Go through the troubles. It's so much easier when you got stuff that someone else has done you can reference. Um, and it's always good to bounce ideas off of everybody. So please, subscribe. Help me out. Enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.